Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So I do hope everyone's well and uh, doing your best to keep away from the dreaded lurgy that's going around. So I think my, my personal feeling is that there won't be or be highly unlikely that we'll see any more shows this year. I think the government will ban all sorts of like large gatherings or gatherings over a certain amount of people until the vaccine's found. I think that'd be for the good of us all. So I think it's going to be stay at home exhibitions from myself and probably a few other YouTubers to uh, to try and sort of keep the boredom away. Anyway, on with the trains. So today's video is going to be a little bit of everything really. I'm fitting my last servo motor. I have speeded that up because otherwise that would be a bit boring. The I've also done some weathering. There's some weathering in here as well. I've uh, weathered two um, ballast wagons, a Hornby Sea Cow and a Backman. I think, you know, Hornby Sea Lion and a Backman Sea Cow. So you'll sort of see that. The Hornby one I've actually speeded up because I found that I was sort of in the way of it. It's very difficult to try and film something and or and, and actually do the work because you sort of you end up in the way of the camera. So I've done my best, but uh, at least you can sort of see at the end what the effect is. What else is there on today's video? So there's a little bit of running and there's a little bit of maintenance work as well. I've had a problem with my single slip. So I've sort of done a little bit of work on that as well. So I've added that in as well as a little bit of a bonus or whatever, really. Okay, well, without further ado, I'm going to get into the video and uh, enjoy. And uh, thank you and keep safe. Stay safe. So you're looking at the underside of the board somewhere I don't normally show because it's a, it's a mess. So I've been tidying up the wiring a little bit today because it's one of them jobs that I need to do. But uh, I haven't been looking forward to like any good electrician. Last thing you want to do is you muck around wiring. But it was getting to be a right tangle. So... I've sorted it out. So what I've used, I don't know how well that'll show up, but I've used like connector blocks and I've, I've allowed two more spare ways on all of them just in case I need to add something. But uh, I don't think so at this junction. So it's looking a bit neater. So the, the nest of wiring, if you look at some of the others going down there, you'll sort of see that's what it did look like. Complete tangle of wires. So hopefully sorted some of that out on this board there's uh, these two here are going to be a different power region because they're gonna, they're on the main line so I'm trying to keep it so as I've got um, got the yard as one power district got the main line as a second power district and I've got the yard at, or the depot at the other end as a third power district so basically what that means is if there's any short circuits then it shouldn't affect the other two power districts well, that's the plan anyway so that's so it's a little bit tidier what i need to do is install the final servo motor but before i do that i've got to do a little bit of cutting the actual servo motor is going to go right where my finger is wherever my finger is it's probably not enough light is there it's going in there so I've got to cut this piece of wood here. So I shall do that with you now. And um, you can see that it's not always fun and games. But that's what comes of pre-planning and looking at where the struts are to where everything else is. Unfortunately, I didn't really have that luxury because my track work was sort of, as I said before, it's pre-made. So it was where it was. And I had to worry about where things were on the crossing. So it turns out that wherever the points ended up is where they ended up. But it's not insurmountable, it just means a little bit of cutting, so I'm going to do that now.
Okay, so that is the servo motor installed on the layout. Now, the next thing I need to do is fit another relay because I've already used up 13, 14, 15, 16 on the other turnout. So this effectively become turnout number 17. So using the So using the mega point system is quite straightforward. You just plug plug and pray. So on this board here it comes supply of piece cable, you want ground is black and then the other end is red. And then all the ones in between all the switch lines. So that just basically plugs into that. This then plugs into the relay board, which is here. So this would be five, six, seven, eight, but in actual fact it won't. It'll be um, 17, 18, 19. And again, just make sure you get them right. So the red goes to the top of the board. that plugged in this board itself doesn't actually need any power it picks it up via these cables via the relay board so it makes life a bit easier so what I need to do now is bring the grey of my frog round into the centre of this switch so I shall just use a couple that I cut off earlier So what I'll do is I'll just stick one in each side for now, but I need to check to make sure polarity is correct before I uh, I know that they'll be right. That's one on each side. So I need to test polarity on the train set.
sorry about the noise outside. The uh, next door we're having an extension built, so and they started today, so they're in with the diggers and bits and pieces, but it shouldn't affect too much. So, whilst I've been playing today, trying to do this postal train, I've been having issues with this double slip or this single slip. So I'm going to replace a piece of rail. So I pulled it out, but I thought I might as well video me putting it back. Obviously, if it don't work or don't come out right, then you won't be watching it. But if it does, then happy days. So I pulled it out. So this was a piece of rail that came out. It, it wasn't long enough, in my opinion. It was a bit of a gap. So I've replaced it with this piece here. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get in there and uh, put it back in. So, first of all, a little bit of flux. One good thing about plying with it, you can make alterations without causing too much harm. thing the piece of rail itself obviously that can't touch there because that's part of the V which changes polarity so there has to be a gap but before the gap was quite big so what I've done is I've changed it to something hopefully a little bit more smaller and also where those two V's meet, it didn't quite meet properly. I mean, it was only sort of like one coach in sort of 30 that was derailing. But as this is going to be an exhibition layout, it's good to try and sort of eliminate all, all potential problems. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by tacking the middle one and then just check it to make sure I'm happy with it. And then I will carry on and tack the rest. I might actually just take just a little tiny bit more of that out. Don't really need to worry too much about gauges because I'm pretty much only going back on where I came out from. He says, so a little bit of solder, just a final check to make sure I'm happy with the location. going to tack that one now. I've just got that sort of. Then I'm going to go and tack one of the end ones. I've got to try and get some electrical connection back on there as well. Hopefully 
hopefully that's improved the situation. seems to have uh, resolved that issue because that coach every single time it went over it was coming off but it was only one bogey on one coach so it's one of those things where I've tried changing the wheels I've changed the bogeys I've swapped bits around and it was still doing it and as I've said before this is an exhibition right so reliability is what I want it's all right sort of saying I won't use that coach but clearly there was some sort of problem there so by doing that it has actually resolved it So now the layout sort of behaving itself, sort of, um, what I've decided I'm going to turn my um, attention to actually trying to sort of do some more scenic stuff, get rid of some of the baseboards and perhaps something a bit more interesting to look at. Rather than a pile of rubbish, it would be nice to actually look at some scenery. So in the parcels bay or in the Red Star Bay, to cover my platform tops, what I've actually used is like Metcalf um, Road. It's, um, it's like the card they do with the tarmac effect, which looks quite good, but you've still got the joints, which you can't really see, but kind of, if if you can avoid that, I think it's probably better to avoid it. So I've been looking at other products, and I was watching a guy from the States on uh, YouTube, um, can't remember what his name is now, but he is absolutely superb. And he used this, um, the AK products now I didn't actually have this one but I have actually used the dirt and it comes like sort of pre-textured and it's really really good so I'm going to give this a shot now and we'll see we'll see what happens see what this looks like um, but for anyone that's interested it's AK and the product number is AK8013 um, you can get this on eBay I did look on eBay but you're about 20 odd quid plus postage this one came from Hobby Holidays. He does a he does a range of useful ones, and they're all sort of well, all the same money, sort of eleven pound forty five, which seems like quite a lot of money. But there's there's actually quite a lot of product in there as well. So use sparingly. That would probably do loads. I know there's other things on the market as well. There's the um, the road system that one of them do, etc. etc. But sometimes it's nice just to try other things. So. I'm going to give this a shot. So what I've done is I've got my only piece of platform at the moment which isn't stuck down because I'm not sure what the curve's going to be on that. So I just thought I would come up here, give it a wipe over it and we'll just see what it looks like. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to give it a shake. First time I've opened it. like so let's apply some see what happens
okay so I don't know if the camera will pick this up very well if there's enough light but there's actually like a, a slight texture in there as well which is what all of these uh, this range of paints come from or, or have in them um, I think it's called active so what I'll do is I'm going to let that dry and see what that looks like and then once once that's dry what I'll do is I'll put some weathering patches in it as well just to sort of change it because obviously you wouldn't want it looking like that but bear in mind that's just gone straight over the wood that's that's actually not too bad so I might well go with that for the uh, platform tops in case it is quite dark so we'll see what it's like see if it lightens up when it dries I'll give it a few hours and then um, I'll come back to you. Okay, so another thing that I've been doing is weathering. Um, I'll try and show you. I'm going to add a bit of extra light. So this was a pre-weathered Hornby um, ballast wagon. But I've added some of my own subtle tones as well. I don't know whether or not you can see, but there's like uh, from the nuts or from the rivets on the side of the wagon there's a little bit of um streaking i don't i don't know if the camera can see that or not so that's the side i've done and that's the side that's basically out of the box from hornby so what we're going to do is i'm going to take this side and try and replicate it almost so if we end up with both the same sides if that makes any sense or, or whether both sides effectively so what I'm going to be using is, or what I've used, is this called Mr. Metal. Um, it's something that Dave on Dean Park has used, and I was quite impressed, so I got some myself. Again, available on eBay, and it's number 213, which is stainless steel. Uh, so that's one. Back to me AK, which is medium rust. And that number is 043, AK 043. Um, bearing in mind, we're trying to sort of like get as many different tones and build up as possible. So um, there's not just any one thing because you don't want it to look too uniform. There's a uh, thanks to Richard Everard Junction. I've got some black wash. Again, there's, there's all sorts of different ones, but this, this one is actually quite nice. It's very, very thin as well. Um, so yeah, so that's just your humble black wash um, number uh, AV0201 and then some, uh, I've got some chalks as well, which I've used and um, that's natural grey and the other one here is burnt sienna. So that's basically what we'll be using. So bear in mind we are actually starting with a pre-weathered side from Hornby, but that shouldn't really make any difference whether it's a pre-weathered or not. Also, what I've done is I've been through with the Mr. Metal Man and I've I've like because these shoots, that's obviously where the um like the ballast and stuff comes out of. So these are kind of gonna be a bit of a mix between shiny and rusty depending on what when they were last discharged if, obviously if it's been used sort of two or three weekends in a row and you sort of see it on the monday or just shortly after that these have been discharged and there's going to be quite a lot of uh, where the ballast has slid through there's going to be quite a lot of shine in there but if it's been sat in a yard for six months then these are going to be really rusty so it's kind of sort of to give them a little bit of an appearance of shining this but equally you want to try and sort of like you don't want it to be over the top so sort of like on this side put the light back on it you can sort of see that they are um th there's a little bit of shine there but equally there's there's a little bit of rust as well it's not kind of shiny and sort of in your face but it is enough to sort of suggest that you know obviously that it has been used fairly recently So the first thing I did was basically just cover the whole wagon in the wash. Oh. 
also another thing I would say is that if you're not if this sort of thing you know painting or, or weathering up a really um, I mean let's put it a different way for someone to sort of grab a 200 or 150 pound plus locomotive and start weathering it if you don't if you haven't really got much of an idea or you haven't done a lot of it then you're braver than me but if you sort of get yourself an old wagon I think most of us have probably got old wagons kicking around that has maybe been superseded by sort of a much later job and you weather that and it all goes terribly wrong then you haven't really lost anything but if you start weathering expensive locos and then you're not happy with the finish then that's when it sort of like you might put you off for life which you know could be a bit of a shame weathering is very personal there's, there's no real sort of like right and wrong way of finishing it up but you know as Richard at Everard Junction was saying if you look through photos even like these wagons here I've sort of been through the Paul Bartlett site today sort of looking at some some of the pictures and there were a few that had rust on them two or three but for the majority of them even these in this livery you know they were in fairly good condition it's obviously the railway didn't want them rusting away because it was a sort of a situation where you know they'd have to replace them so they did even though they were engineers wagons and you know they weren't most of loved of things you know they still did receive a bit of attention and they did try and keep them in some sort of order because obviously for for longevity and trying to make them last so when you're weathering you don't really want to plaster it on to the point of where you can't see any of the details or anything or the color underneath because pretty much that wasn't the case you know they were sort of clean so you know what you've got on that side is probably not far from right because you you know that's just how they were they, they just weren't filthy they, they weren't caked in filth shall we say but they were just sort of enough just sort of like like that sort of subtly but like i say it's up to you personally if you want to weather your rake heavy if you don't want to weather your rake at all then that is you know again that's that's entirely up to you so for me what i do what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cover the whole wagon in in a bit of wash I'm not going to go too mad. Another thing with a lot of wagons is that the panels pretty much never got um, too dirty because I had to see them for different bits and pieces. So at this point, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. Just like that, which is all they would have done prototypically anyway. What I'm going to do is just cover a black wash over the whole thing. Probably should give it a shake. So the actual wagon that we're going to be attacking is a Backman C car. The, the only other thing I've had to do is change the electrification flashes because on this one it was the later wagon, so they were in yellow. So I've changed them back to the earlier colour and I've just put a coat of uh, seal over them because when you start putting the washes on, if you don't, it'll just take them straight off. So um, it's, it's always good just to put the seal over the transfers. Other than that, it's just this way out of the box, brand new one. So, so first thing, and I'm only going to be working in sections as well because of drying time with the products. I don't want to cover the whole wagon and then um, have to come back and create all sorts of problems. One thing I learned from doing the other wagons is to do something with the ends. I will eventually just go over it with the airbrush, but for now, I just get the basic um, colouring on. So these ends are quite they do get quite dirty so it's a case of having to um, get in there before you get too far because otherwise you'll end up with a right mess on your hands so right let's start actually the first thing I'm going to do is put the Mr Metal colours on
so basically what this stuff is it's like gives you sort of like a, a metal coat but you can weather over top of it because there's going to be certain areas on this wagon like here where the ballast flows through and stuff it's it's a case of um that that will that obviously gets all shiny where the ballast goes over it and then it can rust back depending on how much time there's been between the wagons actually been used or left standing I mean, if you sort of was to see this just after it had delivered a couple of loads of ballast, these would be fairly clean. But if it had been sitting in the siding for six months, then these would be well rusty. So it's a case of personal as to how you do that. But you want to have some sort of, um, obviously they don't look like that in, in prototype land. So let's deal with them first. Okay, what you do is you don't want that paint to set off for too long. So you want to sort of apply it and then wait for it to sort of to dry, but not really. How oh, that light's in the best place. said long enough now what I want to try and do is take some of it back out So what you're actually going to end up with is kind of like the streaking sort of like that so that's where the ballast would have sort of slid across it but i'm not that's not going to be left like that the next thing to do is get some of the rust and whilst the paint is still sort of dry is to actually add a little bit of rust or pigment and then that will set into the paint. So just going to add a slightly darker pigment as well, but only a tiny little bit of it. And 
and then you go, you've got sort of the, um, you got the silver underneath, but it's slightly rusted. So that's the sort of effect that you that they they sort of look like. Might actually add a little bit of grey on there as well, just to represent sort of smashed stones. But sort of try and keep it towards the edge. gives it that look of been used but also a little bit of rust mixed up with a little bit of like ballast dust and all everything else that would be all sort of like in there especially if the ballast was wet when they poured it that would have sort of like left a residue like that so that's the shoots done the other area i'm going to highlight with the metal is the catwalk which is along there so i'm gonna, I'm gonna cover that with metal as well This stuff's pretty good. It just if you, it just runs quite well. Be honest there's such little color difference here. i don't really know whether or not it actually stands out at all because it's almost the same color but i'm going to do the other side as well because it will just give it that little bit of extra shine that the plastic won't allow it Okay, that's done. And we can always weather that down a little bit later on anyway, so I'm not overly bothered. That's just like the first coat. Right, so the next stage is just to apply the sides with the wash. I'm just gonna liberally apply that as they say.
Okay, right, I'm gonna give that a little bit of time to dry. Okay, so I suppose that's had about three or four minutes now, not, not particularly long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of the lighter pigment, not, not a lot. And I'm basically just gonna brush it in over the top. And that will also react. I think I probably haven't quite left it long enough. Okay, so I suppose I've spent probably about 40, 45 minutes on this wagon, on this side of this wagon. Um, I don't know, this is probably about as heavy as I'd want them weathered. Because at the time I'm modelling, the Civil Link livery is not exactly that old. And having said that, there are, I've seen pictures of them sort of like 1982, 1983. And I'm sort of like... <laughs> 80 sort of six to 90 ish so i suppose some of them could have had quite a bit of use by them but even so i still wasn't looking at plastering them where to the point of where you couldn't actually tell what they are i mean that's i don't know how well the camera pick out exactly what i've done there but that is you can still see that it's a civil link wagon without really too many problems i've sort of gone more for the subtle subtle-ish weathering but probably like I say it's probably about to the extreme of what I would want to do because um, yeah I just I just think that you can soon go over the top but one of the things one of the problems that I was having was that they were looking even though I was kind of weathering them and dragging it all down all the panels pretty much look the same and I didn't want that so even though I've weathered it it's kind of all still uniform well go and look at any wagon there's nothing uniform about them at all so I sort of got the thinners out and got a little bit more pigment out and done this and done that and um, yeah I think I've ended up with an okay effect I've ended up sort of what I was looking for I mean some people obviously work off photographs which there's nothing wrong with for specific wagons I tend not to do that I tend to sort of like look at a load of photographs as to what roughly I'm heading for and then I sort of like work the train to to that because weathering is very personal. Some people, you know, you might just put the wash on and think that that's good enough and, and, you know, perfect if you do. Or some people want to go to real extremes and sort of like pick out every single last little thing. Um, you know, as I said, it's, it's very personal. It's very much what, what you want to do and how you want to do it. Again, I mean, I'm, I'm a great believer in if you've sort of got just like an old wagon that's kind of, you're probably better off with a lighter wagon than you are a darker wagon. But you know, I think we've, as I've said before, we've all got wagons kicking around in our sort of scrap boxes that have long since sort of been surpassed by other manufacturers. You just grab one of them and sort of have a little play. If you make a real mess of it or pig's ear of it, it doesn't really matter. You just chuck it back in the box and forget it. But... You know, if it comes out and you sort of think, actually, do you know what? That don't look too bad. You know, you might sort of like do a couple of free and then sort of maybe attack one of your better ones. But um, I suppose for a decent weathering job, if you know, there are people like Alex, uh, um, there are loads of people that you, that will weather wagons. But you you know, there's a lot of <laughs> a wagon like this. I suppose you know, you sent it away and it came back looking like this. I'd be happy with that and you sort of paid 25 quid I mean there's, that's fine that's fine for one wagon but by the time you sort of got six or seven you know them 25 quid soon add up um and I, you know there's, there's no problem if you know as i said it's um one of them things it's very personal 
and you know it's up to the individual as to what what they want to do some people are quite happy just to sort of leave them running around out of the box but i'm just going to flip it over to the side that is out of the box so that's that's the the attack side if you like and then that's the straight out of the box side i don't really want to touch it anywhere too much because it's still wet which i suppose looks okay but i think the other side looked better personally um, what i'll do is i'll grab me horn me wagon and i'll i'll, I'll do an up something there in comparison okay so that's the other side of the wagon so that's the second side i did i did start to film it and i will or you would have seen it by now but it's very difficult to sort of concentrate on what you need to sort of do with a wagon and like let the video do it as well because you tend to end up getting in the way so what i'll do is i'll put a compilation of the other wagons together sort of speed it up i say so as you've just seen that by now um just so you'll see me doing it so be interesting to think what what you think so we'll we call this side two or second side done and that'll be side one which was the original side done I'd be interested to hear your comments as to whether or not what what, what side you think is best. Um, just just purely out of interest, really. So, yeah, that's that's the original side, and that's the second side. There's not an awful lot in it, but um, I sort of tried to make sure that I maintain the the yellow band as well, and I, I did sort of take some some off because it was it, I thought it was a little bit too dirty so I sort of took a little bit off it will get a misting of a sealant just to lock everything in place and I also want to get the um, airbrush out I will just get in the ends with a little bit of uh, tractor and I'll have to do so inside the hopper as well because that looks awful but um, this purely this bit is just for the sides and again the comparison of just sort of an out of the box one You can sort of just see what they look like, sort of again, compare the two. So yeah, I would be interested to uh, hear hear your thoughts or, or read your thoughts on that. Um, it, it would be be useful. Okay, well, I'm going to leave that here now, and um, I'll come back to you when I get some more. So that's the two wagons in front of you now well not completed but at least the sides are done as i said when i get the airbrush out i will need to go over a little bit more and also do something with the insides i'm not totally sure if i want to load them or not i don't know whether or not to have some empty and some loaded or i might just load them it just depends how i feel but might be better to have two rakes as sort of one rake in loaded and one out empty or something um not totally made my mind up about that but i've got a couple more on order so i should end up with three or four or so i'll just decide what i want to do with them but yeah there they are there's a run past so i'm going to leave this video here today and i will come back to you once we've made some more progress as i said the next stage of um progress down here is actually trying to do a bit of something with the scenery and um, rather than looking at a yoo box might actually be able to look at some grass and some trees for a change so something I'm looking forward to and whilst we're still in this lockdown it's an ideal opportunity to um, 
could come down here and actually get on with stuff rather than just uh, lounging around on my set there watching television. There's only so many only fools and horses you can watch. Anyway, everyone look after yourself and take care in these times. It's uh, it's very strange times and uh, you do need to take care. So, yep, everyone look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.